by. Then we thought he did um, some work and some research on one of the earthworks that they were joining, this, this line was joining, which was Wanderbury. And he decided that originally it had been built as an observatory, an astro astronomical observatory. And he dated it on his computer by going back through the years to 2500 or 2450 BC, take or give about 200 years. Um, so we asked ourselves at that point who could possibly have done this work then, because we didn't know of any civilization who could have brought about such very clever and accurate mathematics on land. Uh, and that's what started us off. We went down to Cornwall and we looked at stone circles and he, um, uh, he did diagrams and checked and walked Bodmin more a few times until um, in history uh, we, we found a group of sages who had actually travelled the world doing this sort of thing and civilising the local people. Um, and then through documents, ancient documents, and um, Sumerian clay tablets, which are in the Philadelphia Museum, we, um, we pieced together the story that um, there was a civilization who had high ideals, who landed in the Lebanon, because it says so on the Sumerian clay tablets, at about 8,000 BC he worked out and they established there a, a horticultural um, garden and orchard and they looked after the local people and taught them how to use things um, because they were very backward um, and this turns into being the civilization that uh, we I called them our people at that point because I was quite sure nobody else knew anything about them we had discovered them they were our people but now I find that W. J. Perry in 1927 called them the archaic civilization, and um, other people have come up with clues, but nobody, as far as I know, has actually tracked them down through the work they did, and um, so that's how we got on to the sages, and it has turned out to be an absolute revelation, because they seem to be the people who filtered down into Palestine and, um, and the, the people that the, the Old Testament calls the angels. They were en Gaeli, lords of cultivation. And it's very easy to see how en Gaeli became angel. They also started this garden and orchard, the horticultural place, and that was known as the Garden of Eden to the local people or to the people later on, but to us, we had made the link between uh, that time and much earlier times. And now Edmund believes that they arrived there to do this work because they were restarting a civilization which had been smashed apart by a natural cataclysm. Don't you? That's right. We, the dates now have been adjusted. Um, carbon dating has pushed the dates back to about 9,500 BC, yes. when a small group um, Tim always felt that they were survivors or were starting again, not the beginning of Earth as such. No. The people who were starting again and uh, built a settlement, and they were benevolent people, and I think uh, the evidence that I've been providing, there's lots of evidence that they were benevolent, good people who gave us laws, the divine laws as they were called. They were deified later on as gods, and they were led by somebody called Anne, and Anne is found as the supreme being in Egypt and Mesopotamia and Africa, all around the place, as a single god. So we're looking at a monotheism, if you like, a single god, right from the start. And then other gods come into the picture much later on. So if you look at the gap between 9,500 BC, which corresponds to the earliest dates at Jericho, um, and all we're now beginning to learn about archaeology, we can follow the thread from the people who lived and worked at Karsag, as the yes. Sumerians called it, um, which means head enclosure. The story of them is on the clay tablets in, in great detail. 
things went wrong. They got a terrible disease and nearly died, but I think they'd been eating meat that wasn't right. And um, then a new group of people who they had employed to do the work intermarried or interbred with the local women and produced monsters, and that had to be dealt with. It wasn't plain sailing by any means, but they had started off uh, to build uh, a good society. And um, it's extraordinary to me that we discovered them on the ground a few miles from home, which is in a Cambridgeshire village. Um, and so that took up the rest of our lives. Uh, we wrote the books and we, um, we just carried on with it. We, we couldn't really stop, <laughs> could we? <laughs> That's right, and what's so interesting is that this was an agricultural settlement, and so all those domesticated crops and domesticated animals, when we're beginning to look at the genetics and the history of all those uh, plants and animals, we can trace them back to the same area mm. about the same time. This is like the fig. That's right. Like the fig, which has just been uh, dated at 9,300 north of Jericho in the valley down below Karsag, the Rift Valley. And it's the same with the chickpea, it's the same with the wheats and the barleys mm. and the flax and the peas, the beans, the vetches, all these extraordinary crops which were grown together in rotations and with livestock as well. We don't quite know where they got the seeds, whether they brought them from somewhere else, whether they saved them, um, but they were very knowledgeable in science, um, extremely knowledgeable, and they knew how to grow, for instance, the chickpea, which was worth growing because it's huge um, content of protein. And um, they knew that it didn't like winter weather. So they, they grew it in summer, although they had to water it copiously. Um, all little things like that showed how clever they were and um, just how knowledgeable, didn't it? That's right, and the, the leading, there were, th there were three key people, Anne, uh, somebody called Enlil, and also...